So today in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the internal feature from Salesforce. And by using that, you can easily truncate a custom object quickly. So if you are dealing with you know, a requirement where you need to truncate a custom object, there are multiple ways to do that. We all know that, right? We can write our, you know, uh, anonymous Apex class, Apex code, batch class, or we can, you can execute something in the workbench to must delete records, right? But all these options need some kind of Apex coding. And while doing with the Apex coding, you always need to keep in mind that there is, a, there is a governor limit that you need to deal with, right? So to solve all these problems, Salesforce is having a kind of a hidden feature with which you can truncate a custom object very quickly. So in this video, I'm going to show you that feature. So first thing first, uh, this feature is only available in Classic. Unfortunately, it's not available in Lightning, but maybe in future Salesforce will bring that feature in Lightning. But uh, as of today, uh, this feature is only available in Classic. Now, to enable this option, what you need to do first, definitely you need to go back to the Classic environment, and then in on your on your uh, setup one, you need to click on the setup, and then on your quick find, you need to search for user interface. So once you search the user interface, if you go a little below, there is an option called enable custom object truncate. You need to first enable this option. I've already done that in my org, but you know this will be probably unchecked in your org. So you need to uncheck that and click on save. That's the only thing that you need to do. Once this is done, what you will do, if you go to now any custom object, let's say I have a custom object called trans transaction. So this is a custom object that I have. So if I go to this object now, I can see there is an option coming as truncate. Uh, so we can we can always click on that, and it will it's going to you know delete all the records from this object. To but you know before we start, what I've done, I have uh, executed a very basic anonymous code which is basically you know inserting 2000 records into this transaction object so now if i go to the workbench and run this query like select count from the transaction it is giving it is telling me okay i need to log in quickly okay now if i go to the object called transaction yep and if i do a count it's telling me that I have 2001 uh, records present in the transaction object. And this is basically the tab uh, transaction object. And I can see like there are many records, right? Now, if I click on this truncate, it will first ask me what is the name of the object that you want to truncate. It's just kind of, you know, uh, one last time kind of uh, before you truncate all the data, it's just asking like, you know, uh, give me the name of the object uh, and just to just, just a kind of a safeguard thing, right? Uh, because it's going to delete all the records. So now if I click on truncate, what is asking me, enter the name of the object to truncate. So I'll put truncate here. I'll put transaction because that's the name of the object and click on truncate. And boom, all the records are gone. Now if I do refresh, there is no data. If I do a query, there is no records, right? So that, that's a very quick solution to truncate all your records. And the advantage is like, you don't need to run any Apex class. You don't need to deal with, you know, Salesforce governor limit. Everything is taken care by Salesforce, right? So that's a very easy solution if you are dealing with uh, truncation of data. Now, once the data is truncated, right? If you go to your object, you'll find there is a new entry called deleted objects. And there is this one, transaction truncate. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of experiment here. So what I'm going to do instead of deleting, instead of deleting permanently, right? I'm going to undelete and I'll see what will happen. So the undelete is done. And if you, if I, if I go to the object now and go a little below, we'll see this was, this was the object we truncated, right? And once we undelete the truncated option, it created one object called transaction truncate. So now if I query this object, right? 
it's still it's original one it's still showing zero records right but now if i query this object which is basically the truncated version of the previous one if i query this one i can see it's basically holding the old 2001 record that's very important that's very useful now if you need to you know uh, get back your old data uh, from the object you can always have you can always get back from this object uh, and then you can run all your logic to get back the data or some portion of the data uh, but we need to keep in mind this object will be available only for 15 days in, in the deleted section once you once you undelete then it's a different story altogether it's a new object but in the deleted section the truncated data will only be available for 15 days after that Salesforce will hard delete the entire object so now let's say I have this object, right? So what about, I go to this one and I'm gonna truncate the truncated option. I'm gonna truncate the this new truncated object, right? So let me choose the name, truncate, give this one and truncate, right? Now if I run query, it's telling me I don't have, I don't have any record, that's good. Now if I go here, it's telling me I have this one and see the name It's transaction trunk underscore trunk, right? Let's do some fun thing here. Let's undelete this one and let's see what will happen. So once you up, undelete this one, it's creating a new object called transaction trunk trunk. In running this one, It's a custom object. You have your 2001 records. What will happen? We'll go, we'll do one more time. What will happen if I truncate this object? So I've truncated now. You see, it's keep on appending this trunk at the end of this object name. So that's a, that's a, that's a way to handle the situation. I don't need to, you need to try. I, I don't think in, in real uh, world or real life scenario, you need to keep on truncate your truncated version of the object, right? That's probably not required, but just something, you know, uh, we need to, just something that uh, kind of experiment uh, thing that I was doing. Like what will happen if I keep on truncating my truncated version, how long I can go, I don't know how long we can go or how long Salesforce will allow me to truncate this one, but the logic they follow, they keep they keep on adding trunk at the end of the object name. And now if I can do the erase, it's going to permanently delete the entire custom object. So that's good thing. So, uh, so this is a very cool feature I feel, and uh, you, you can delete your custom object. The only thing you need to keep in mind, you can delete custom object as long as this custom object is not linked with any other object through any kind of you know relationship like the lookup or master detail, or um, there is an external ID in the custom object or the custom object is enabled. Custom object is, you know, used for the skinny table or it's used in any kind of reporting snapshot. So th these are the, these are the few things that you need to keep in mind. Uh, but other than that, I feel like it's a very cool feature, which will quickly enable you to, or quickly help you to delete or truncate the entire object, keeping the object metadata intact, just deleting all the data. So I, I'm gonna make this video available in my blog post, and I'm gonna put the link of my blog post in the description of this video. So if you like the video, thumbs up, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.